All right, welcome to this lesson. I had a comment the other day that I thought was interesting and worthy of a lesson in and of itself. The comment was an inquiry. How do you do the vibrato? How do you get that bluesy vibrato? Aaron, how do you play the note? The note that B.B. King played. The note that Albert King played. The note that Eric Clapton played a little bit in Strange Brew. Well, there's a lot of different ways to play the blues note. But one of the key components is vibrato. And that's what I wanted to look at today. How do you execute the killer vibrato where you can just sting the note, where you can sound like Albert Collins? Well, you need, I think, some equipment to do it, some of the proper equipment, but mostly you just need the right technique. So let's try to do this. Let's try to figure out what is the key to excellent vibrato. I want to teach you how to impress your friends and other players and audiences with your killer vibrato. So let's look in to what I'm going to say are the seven keys to killer vibrato and therefore to playing that killer note. So subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Let's riff! Here are the seven keys to playing the note. Let's play the note. Let's do it in G. That's the note. In terms of note selection, there's not really a lot of note selection here. This is the root note. That is the note that resonates so well with B.B. King and all the great blues players. And it is a great sort of starting block. Uh, the first block, in a way, it should be the first block that every guitar player learns, at least every guitar player that wants to be great at blues. You have to learn how to play this root note convincingly. Well, the first piece of this, and you're all going to have to kind of figure this out for yourself. Now, you can try to do it the way I do it, but you can also try to just use these keys to figure out your own way of doing it because I've found in the end that it's best to figure out your own way even if it's unorthodox if you can get the right sound that's all that matters so the first component is whether you push or pull on the string so we're in G so a push would be going up with the string with your vibrato see I'm going up can also do it with the wrist. We're going to talk about how to do it in a second in terms of the uh, mechanics, but the choice is to go up in terms of a push or to go down possibly too. A lot of people play their vibrato that way. I like to go up. The next factor is the position of your hand when you're doing this vibrato. Listen, you can either bring your thumb over the neck if you like to play in this way. And if you do it that way with your thumb over the neck, you're going to have to use a lot more wrist. You see, if my thumb's over the neck like this, if you like this position, and you can do most of the things you need to do on the guitar in this position, but you're going to have to use the kind of flick of the wrist, the twisting of the wrist. Um, but what I do often to get more leverage is I don't I bring the thumb over behind the neck, you see. So I've got more leverage. I'm using less wrist and I'm actually using my it's kind of like my forearm and it's my whole arm in a way, which gives you some more strength. You get more leverage, see? Like this. So. Um, or bring the thumb over. 
but I like to get more leverage. I have pretty big hands, but um, I still like the leverage. It just it gives me, it enables me to sting it more. The next question, of course, is which string to use. Well, we know what note you're playing, but it's not necessarily clear which string to use. Well, B.B. King liked to use the B string. Albert King was a fan of the B string for this uh, purpose, as so was uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. So uh, that means the B string, I think, does get some nice tones in this way. But you can also use the G string. Clapton likes to use the G string. But it doesn't cut. So that's a little bit of a different tone. Clapton did use that from time to time uh, on the G string. And then, of course, you can also use the E string, which gives you some even more sort of bite to your tone. So basically, in order to get that tone, your only options are the unwound strings, G, B, and E. The next factor, the third factor, is which finger to use. Well, that's important. B.B. Uh, King himself liked to use the first finger, uh, which I've been using from time to time. He would come over the neck often with his thumb, but... He actually liked to keep his thumb uh, on the neck in the back and then also do this kind of swivel. And that has the added uh, effect of, it's kind of flashy too because you can kind of swing your fingers and that kind of intensifies the vibrato for the audience. Now, of course, you can push up as well. As I was saying, you get the pull or the push. But uh, in terms of the finger, you're going to have to learn to basically use, you don't want to deal with your pinky. It's the first three fingers, and you're going to want to practice on all of them. The second finger is a good option, um, and Clapton really likes to play this note with the second finger. BB was a big fan of the first, and Stevie Ray Vaughan... was a big fan of the third finger. And that's what I was playing on uh, Strange Brew uh, in the intro section. The next factor, which is the fifth factor, is the speed of the vibrato. How fast are you going to shake the note? Well, my experience is that to get that bluesy sting, that bluesy tone, it's got to be pretty rapid. about like that but you you can experiment with some other speeds kind of the tempo of the vibrato I guess we could call it Albert King would sometimes go a little bit slower on the vibrato and that can have a certain effect but generally I think Rapid vibrato really enhances that kind of sting and cut. And then the sixth factor is very important. The attack. The attack. And that is a lot of what creates that kind of cut. That cut of the note when you hear B.B. play it. Well, oftentimes B.B. would basically use this kind of scratch technique. You mute all the strings, right? You mute all the strings with your, well, I'm left-handed. It's with my left hand over here. It'll be with your right hand, but you mute those, and you also mute it with your first finger uh, over here on the strings so they're muted as well, so there's extra protection. Once you have all the protection you need, you can just come down on all six strings in a way, but you don't have to do all of them. You can come a little closer, but the point is to kind of get the cut. David Gilmore would do this a lot, but Stevie would do it. That's a, It's a very uh, interesting effect, but it doesn't need to happen. You can also get very... Uh, good sting by just attacking the note. 
I like to maybe do the first one with the little scratch and then attack the notes singly. Another thing you can do to enhance the effect, particularly in the key of G, or really only in the key of G unless you have a capo, which is something that Albert Collins did, which is to play the open G right before you play the higher G, the stinging G. So something like this. Nice little embellishment. You can also use your finger to pluck at the strings rather than pick it. You see, I'm plucking it. Stevie would do that a lot. I talked about it in a previous video. And then, finally, I think that something should be said about the settings on your amplifier. I think a lot of different guitars can make this kind of tone very fine, very, you know, well enough anyway, sufficiently. But with respect to the amps, you have to watch out. You should be using a tube amp. You should not have the distortion cranked up. In other words, the drive cranked up like you would have it on a Marshall. You're never going to find a good bluesy BB King tone with a Marshall overdrive sound. No, you need that just natural kind of warmth, natural overdrive in a tube amp will work. So those are the seven factors to killer vibrato and to playing that killer note that we all want to play so well. First, do you want to push or you want to pull? Figure it out. Second, do you want to position your hand with the thumb over the neck and do more of a swivel with your wrist? Or do you want to position your thumb uh, in back of the neck so you have a little more uh, leverage. Um, and I would say try it in the back because that'll give you plenty of leverage to learn. Next question is which string you're most comfortable on? I suppose some of you could like it up here. On the G string or on the E string, of course, down here, it's going to be hard to shake the string because it's kind of tight down there. But further up here, like say if we were playing in the key of D, you could do it on the E string and get a lot of sting. Uh, which finger to use? Practice on all three of your first three fingers. Uh, like I said, everything except the pinky. Work on the speed of your vibrato. Make it fast. Not too fast so it's that you don't want it to be jerky and mechanical, but just fast enough. It's got a sting. Uh, the attack, you can use the, string, the muted strings to kind of enhance your attack. Or if you're in the key of G, you can... You can pluck that uh, open G string before you hit your note. And then finally, figure out your settings on your amplifier. And if you practice all those things, you will be able to get that note. You will be able to tear faces off with your sting and your cut. And it is a great building block to great blues playing. I will be back to talk a little bit more about the different kinds of notes that you would put around that central note, the root note that I just talked about. Well, what notes do you embellish it with? I'll talk more about that next time, but for now, try that open G trick that Albert Collins uses. It sounds really good when your amp is cranked up and the band is going. I hope everyone is well. I'll be back soon. Subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.